um, um, what's happened in the um, in, in the case of Indonesia. And um, I think you have you have gone to uh, some of the lectures that that's been discussing um, something uh, very much related to Indonesia or very much specific to Indonesia. But on these um, sessions, it's it's cannot be exclusively Indonesian, to be honest, because because if we talk about the Islamic economics and finance, um, uh, the the founding fathers of of this movement, this the founding fathers, the thinkers, the the the, the first each um, um, uh, was actually being being done by many of the uh, 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 experts, by many of our founding fathers from Pakistan. So um, I think it's fair to say that the Islamic world is actually owe a lot on um, um, uh, on the legacy that has been uh, given by the uh, Pakistan's. Um, uh, expert uh, in the early 1970s when the Islamic economics um, movement, if I may say, was actually being first put forward. So um, um, I think um, in many cases I was feeling like if I talk about Islamic economics, um, what it is or um, uh, how it is being different from conventional, it would be unfair because it's like teaching uh, the the, the the fish to swim if we talk to um, uh, our brother or sister from Pakistan because it's uh, the the experts are many from um, uh, the Pakistan side. So um, let me more specific about Indonesia. So uh, can I share the screen? Neha, yeah, right. Okay. Allow me to share. Yes, so yeah. you can. Thank you. So, um, <clears throat> we will discuss about this very interesting topic, the, the Indonesia's potential market in Sharia, uh, economy and halal market. Uh, a bit of introduction, I'm, I'm currently um, working as a faculty of economics uh, um, uh, lecturer in University of Indonesia, specialized in Islamic economics, but I also work in Samudra Indonesia. We we have representative office, um, uh, two representative office in India offices in India. So we are in the logistic and um, uh, shipping and shipyard and 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 um, all related to the marine industry uh, in Indonesia. So. Um, India is one of um, the, the the countries that uh, we have our branch. Um, uh, Singapore, we have in Dubai, we have uh, in total almost a hundred branches uh, around the world, uh, uh, including domestics in Indonesia. So, um, regarding the Islamic economics, if we talk about the potential of Indonesia, uh, let, let's talk about the discussion uh, on the um, um, what does Indonesia have, you know. Um, um, what's the demography that actually support the the, the 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 economy of Indonesia? If we want to optimize Indonesian potential towards becoming a developed countries, currently we we are we are in the middle income countries now. Uh, um, hopefully not being trapped in the middle. Now um, we are in terms of the area we are number fourteen in the world. Uh, the area is almost two. A million kilometers per square uh, in total, but two thirds of our um, uh, uh, our area are actually uh, the, the 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 sea. So we are we are the largest uh, arch archipelago uh, in the world, and um, it brings both the the challenge as well as the difficulties. So in terms of population, we are number four in the world. Um, uh, China, India. Uh, the U.S. and then uh, Indonesia. So we are 275 million, uh, almost 87 percent of the population are Muslim. So uh, in terms of GDP, we are now reaching almost 1,400 billion um, uh, USD. We are number 16 in the world. That's why we were uh, joining the 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 G20. Um, uh, we had the the, the uh, we are lucky enough to to host G20 uh, back uh, last year. 
so in Bali. Um, and then in terms of export, we are number 28 in the world. Um, we are um, having on 320 billion USD uh, uh, last year. And uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, the Human Development Index of Indonesia is number 114. Uh, in the world, so with the uh, with index of zero point seventy five, so um, if you have a look at this, then then you can say you know like if your population is number four in the world, but your export is number twenty eight, if your GDP is only number sixteen, and your HDI is number one hundred fourteen, then that means the population are not producing enough, are not contributing enough to the economy. Um, um, uh, uh, the, the productions of each of the population is not up to the level if we compare to the other countries. Uh, or we can see it as an opportunity that there are rooms for improvement when, when, when the uh, other part of the world are actually able to reach that level, the same human being supposed to be uh, able to reach the same level, as, uh, especially in, in this case, Indonesian uh, and um, our government. So uh, there are huge potential moving towards that for becoming a developed countries, and yet uh, realizing it is 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 the challenge that was being put on the table. Now, how about the Islamic um, halal industry or Islamic finance? Uh, um, uh, how the government see it? How the uh, uh, the population see it? Let's have a look at the the um, uh, index that was actually developed by various uh, 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 institutions. Number one is the global indicator, uh, Islamic economy indicator. Um, this was by uh, Dinar Standard but in 2022. Indonesia is actually ranked number four. But if you have a look at in a more details, number four, the score is only 68.5. Uh, is quite low, um, 68.5. We compare with the one above, it's 90.2. So we are around about 50% uh, left compared to uh, our, uh, um, um, our uh, uh, the second, uh, the one that precedes us. And we are way behind if we compare to the Malaysia. So we are we are one third of what Malaysia got, uh, whereas Malaysia was just the next uh, neighbors from, from Indonesia. Uh, Pakistan in this case is 44.9, uh, um, is number 15 uh, in the world in terms of the global e economy indicators. Um, in terms of Islamic finance, our uh, position is number six. Uh, we are lagged behind Malaysia, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, Ku Kuwait, yeah, UAE, um, and then, uh, but we are ahead of Iran, uh, Oman, Qatar, and Jordan. Unfortunately, Malaysia, uh, Pakistan was not uh, on the top 10 list for the Islamic finance. On the halal food, we are number two. Uh, we are just uh, 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 being left by Malaysia. But uh, if you have a look in more details, the, the halal food site was just telling us on the consumer side, so the potential market, not um, on the producer side where we are actually contributing to the to the market of, of halal food as a producer, as a provider of, of, of the food in the market. Um, unfortunately, uh, with the uh, beauty of the country. I, I know Pakistan is also very beautiful. I, I have my previous student um, uh, when, he, when he got a, um, a scholarship from China, he decided he got a very good Pakistani friends and then he decided to visit uh, Pakistan and saw in the in, in his social media how beautiful Pakistan is. And and the fact that um, uh, both Muslim, other Muslim countries like like me, if I if I don't get the student go to Pakistan, then I didn't know it was it was it was it was that tremendously beautiful. Uh, um, and to some other uh, to to non-Muslim countries as well. I mean, like um, um, uh, their prejudices, there are there are there are there are there are scares. People are scared to come. The same as Indonesia, uh, is it safe or or not? So although. Uh, both of our countries are, are, are very much uh, uh, endowed with so beautiful places. Um, 
a tremendous scenic um, uh, uh, beach, uh, you name it. Um, um, uh, the fact that we are not on the list of Muslim friendly travel is actually indicating that even as a Muslim countries, we are not differentiate our market enough to convince our Muslim travelers to come to our uh, uh, our country. Um, um, Singapore is number two, uh, uh, although the Muslim is not majority there, but but um, uh, they they can convince uh, a Muslim traveler to, to to come to their country and uh, and 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 and. Um, Paying, um, uh, contributing to to the to, to their uh, um, <clears throat> to their tourism uh, income, so um, uh, we even um, even Bahrain, a small uh, country in in uh, Middle East, uh, is number four um, in 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 this Muslim friendly travel. Um, on the modus fashion, Indonesia is considered number three. Uh, this is something interesting as well, you know, like Pakistan, uh, Bangladesh, for example. Pakistan uh, are, are famous to be the, the producer for garments, uh, um, international garment, H&M, um, Zara, or all those uh, stuff. Uh, you can see that it's made in uh, Pakistan or Bangladesh. And yet for the modest fashion, um, uh, the entrepreneurial uh, level of our Muslim uh, society are not uh, able to reach and make it globally accepted, uh, globally consumed by even the Muslim uh, consumers uh, 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 ourselves. So um, Indonesia in this case is is reaching number three, uh, well, quite below uh, Turkey and uh, United Emirates. But it's interesting that China is number four, although they are not actually uh, having uh, a, um, uh, substantial numbers of Muslim. Uh, we can see France is still uh, being on the top uh, 10 as well, and Germany as well, Singapore and Italy and Spain are, are also introducing that. Um, uh, probably some of you who are quite familiar with um, or play a lot on the social media know, uh, for example, H&M appointed one of the UK um, uh, 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 Muslim um, uh, women to represent their 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 line of modest fashion. Um, um, uh, you saw her debate in the in Oxford, um, uh, uh, tremendously interesting, and and that's how they they convince and 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 sell and 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 uh, capitalize to some extent the the market of of uh, our. Uh, potential uh, uh, economy, Muslim economy. And uh, fifthly, on the pharma and cosmetics, Indonesia is ranked uh, nine in this case. Um, we are way below even to um, uh, Belgium, France, uh, UAE, Netherlands is entering this market as well. Singapore is number one, Malaysia is number two. So although this is more like a, the Islamic economy indicators, but um, uh, uh, as the producer itself, are, are, are very much wide variety. So some non-Muslim countries are actually uh, being on top of the top 10 uh, in this case. And lastly, unfortunately, none of uh, us, uh, both Indonesia and Pakistan, are on the media and recreation uh, uh, indicator. Uh, um, this is more on how, how often and how uh, massive is the media and recreation uh, are being produced for the topic of um, Islamic economy um, uh, uh, in in the country. So um, uh, that also show that if if we believe that the the media is the 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 the, the medium for doing the dawah, you know, like the the, uh, the 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 socialization to the people, the the teachings to the people, the 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 the, the, uh, the, the understanding that we we try to impose to people, then uh, we're not doing enough for 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 that uh, for for that uh, field. And then uh, we still believe that it's a promising landscape. It's not yet being realized, but it's very much promise, promising landscape in this case. So. Um, uh, Number one is that, as I mentioned just now, 87% of our populations are Muslim. 
Um, it's the world's largest Muslim population, and it exhibits a robust and growing middle income consumer segments. Uh, so the purchasing power is there. The, the Muslim uh, are, are massive in, in our country. And uh, interestingly, by the Pew Research Center in 2020, 96% of our population stated a correlation between belief in God and morality. So in this case, um, um, uh, uh, other words, we, we saw that that um, that uh, religion is playing a great role on on how people would behave and uh, in uh, um, or what they will take action on. And this can be translated into when they have the purchasing power, their choice of what they will consume will be in line with what they believe will be in line with the regulations that was being put by the religion. And in this case, uh, the halalness of the products, the the, the Islamic um, uh, uh, point of view towards the product is something that 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 influenced their, uh, uh, their, their, their purchasing uh, choice. And um, very interestingly, we are we are we are we are we are consistently being in number one uh, for the most generous country um, uh, by the CAF World Giving Index. Um, as you know, that Islamic finance, uh, Islam is actually um, um, uh, put a lot of uh, 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 attention towards uh, altruism, towards giving. Um, 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 many, many verses in the Quran is actually telling us to, to actually giving, um, uh, 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 doing your uh, salah, doing your pray, but also always been uh, always been um, uh, reminded together with um, uh, paying your zakah, uh, uh, pay the the, the 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 obligatory donation, the zakah. But also um, in the case of uh, CAF World Giving Index, uh, it's also uh, the ability for the people to um, uh, the the. The willingness of people to actually help a stranger uh, that was being asked there to com also to commit voluntary voluntary uh, activities. So it shows that that um, uh, uh, the influence of the kindness was there, the influence of religion to create someone's behavior. That more giving is there, uh, and and as it is uh, zakah, um, sadaqah, um, a walk off. Um, um, are very close to, to, to the heart of uh, many of our Muslim uh, society. And number four, why it is a promising landscape is also because Indonesia demonstrate a relatively high score in social capital compared to Thailand and Malaysia. This is from the Legacy Prosperity Index. What we mean with, cap with social capital is uh, the benefit and and the advantages gained from social connections, the trust, the cooperation, the shared norms and the values within a community or a society. So in that case, it shows that is not individualism that that was that was being practiced um, uh, in there. Uh, and uh, another one is that that I think we need to mention is that one hundred ninety six point seven. Uh, million uh, internet users, or is equal to 73.7% of the populations. This is according to UPG uh, uh, in 2020. I think it's, it's even higher now uh, uh, after the pandemic uh, because it was being forced by by the by the um, by the situations where people could not meet offline and, or directly, uh, the internet user is uh, uh, like what we got now with with the with the Zoom or with other um, a platform. We can eventually um, uh, stay connected um, uh, uh, to 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 do uh, lots of other things. Uh, the teaching in the universities, uh, in the uh, even primary schools, was was being done online so many people were actually being forced to be able to uh, have internet connection and uh, being the user of internet because of the pandemic so i think even a uh, higher uh, contributions for this a higher promising landscape by 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 the internet population and 
Also, in terms of the population, we know that the millennials are 26% of our population. The Gen Z is 74.9%, uh, sorry, 28%, uh, which is equal to 74.9 million. And it represents potential consumers of Islamic finance and the halal industry. This is based on our in Indonesia Bureau of Statistics in 2022. So um, it is interesting to... Um, remind that the, the baby boomers is someone who actually being um, 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 born in 1946 to 1964 after the uh, World War II, uh, World War I, I mean, and Gen X is 1965 to 1980, and millennials are 1981 to 1996, and Gen Z is 97 to 2011, and um, after 2011, we call it the uh, generation alpha back to a right so this is the uh, shaping of the market a uh, halal market in the future what we can see that um muslim consumer expenditure on dining just the dining and delivery in indonesia is around about 1000 trillion rupiah 1000 trillion rupiah is around about uh, um 666 on 666 um, uh, million uh, dollars. Um, uh, no, billion, billion dollars. Uh, um, um, and then over 70% of respondents rely on social media to find out about new halal food. So they, they're not, they're not, they, they will be visiting some places, local made, um, uh, uh, that was actually being promoted in the in the social media. As of January 2021, Indonesia ranked third after China and India by reaching 170 million users on social platforms. So we really, really go into the uh, TikTok, the um, Instagram, Facebook, um, uh, Friendster. Friendster is no longer available. Um, if anyone here know friends or then uh, you are from uh, generation uh, X or baby boomers. So um, so um, people were so much influenced by the, the social media. Uh, in this case, um, when we ask, uh, when we're being asked, uh, uh, this is a, a, a based on the Crescent ratings and um, our Indonesian uh, uh, committee for uh, national committee for economics and uh, uh, financial, uh, uh, Islamic economics and finance. They found that 74% uh, people find out about new halal food in the city by the social media. Uh, by the word of mouth is even less than 50%, the same as culinary blogs or news online and group chat was only 724.24% uh, and by the TV is only 22%. So uh, lifestyle and travel block is 18%. So uh, more of the halal food producers are uh, using the, the so-called, um, uh, I think it was called the, the uh, influencer, right? Influencer to actually promote their products in, in, in the influencer uh, platform. Sorry. Yeah. So this is the opportunities for Indonesia in the development of halal industry. If we have a look at, if we have a look at the top 10 countries by Islamic finance asset, the total assets of Indonesia is only 119.5 billion dollars, billion dollars and this is number 6. We are way lagged behind compared to even Kuwait which is quite small or Qatar which is quite small countries. Um, uh, UAE, Malaysia, Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia and Iran is, is, is leading the market for the total Islamic finance asset. I think the current um, uh, as total asset is, is reaching uh, uh, 3 billion, uh, uh, 3,000 3, billion uh, um, uh, uh, trillion, 3 trillion um, USD now. And in terms of top five com cosmetic con Muslim consumer market, the the market is number two in the world for the for the Muslim consumer market. We we are have having four point seven uh, market 
um, uh, uh, marketizations of, of the cosmetics so far. Um, uh, some of the some of the cosmetics, local cosmetics, are truly actually built by the uh, promotions that it is halal that this is this is uh, having the halal certifications. We there are uh, Warda that actually firstly introduced that, and then some other uh, companies uh, are actually joining that local internationally. Um, uh, some of our international. Uh, producers also doing so, you know, like uh, PNG, Unilever uh, uh, are not only having halal certifications of their products, but they also um, uh, uh, produce a specific Muslim uh, users. For example, they have a, a shampoo for the hijabi. So for the uh, for the girls with hijab, uh, they produce the shampoo that, that in, in their market, uh, 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 advertising. They 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 show that uh, the the that it actually will will uh, uh, cultivate um, uh, the needs of uh, of the uh, of the specific market, which is the uh, the girls with or, or the women with hijab. And in terms of international tourism, number of arrival in two thousand nineteen, we are so much like behind. Oh, it's only 18.1 uh, million people. It's so much way compared to Malaysia, almost a, a, a 70 percent. Uh, UAE uh, and Saudi Arabia are number three and number four, and uh, number one was actually uh, Turkey. Um, um, and now even more people are actually uh, 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 planning to uh, go to Turkey with with a uh, with a uh, with a. Uh, 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 cheap uh, um, exchange rate that was, that was there <clears throat> or, or depreciations of, of Turkey's uh, local currency. In terms of top media and recreations, Muslim consumer market, Indonesia was number two. It was just under Turkey uh, with 22.5 US billion, only uh, like around about 5 uh, billion compared to the uh, Turkey. So here is um, the, the 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 data on Indonesia global market halal industry. On the processed food and beverage, we only export two hundred ninety two billion. Uh, the growth was amazing uh, from two thousand eighteen to two thousand twenty two. For the last five years, uh, our cumulative aggregate um, uh, growth uh, rate is is twelve point eight percent, and we are ranked ten. Um, we are number one of Muslim uh, consumers, but we are ranked 10th in, in that, and our market share is only 1.2. Uh, so in, in that manner, we are more or less uh, not yet being the main producers. Uh, our market share is so, so small, but yet we are the, 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 the biggest uh, consumers of it. So the halal food industry experiencing high growth both domestically and internationally, facing several challenges, including the certification costs for SME. Uh, the government eventually introduced the uh, halal certificate, uh, free halal certifications. And um, we also now uh, require uh, all of the listed food uh, or food that was actually being marketable, uh, being marketed in Indonesia need to have halal uh, certificates. So uh, the, the, the regulation will actually take effect next year uh, where, where it is obligatory for every food uh, being, being sold in Indonesia to have a halal certification. So the, the government, the Majlis Ulama are now having programs where they, where, where they actually reduce the price of the halal certifications process or they even have some free halal certification uh, uh, um, uh, process that's available there. Yet, um, we have the international collaboration for mutual acceptance of halal certification certificates, but we have high dependence on imported raw materials such as beef, wheat, and soybeans. In terms of fashion, the export value is 9.6 billion. The growth is 2.8% uh, uh, cumulatively from 2018 to 2022. We are 
ranking 12, and our market share again is only 1.7 million. So the fashion industry experiencing high growth, both uh, domestically and internationally. Challenges in the Muslim fashion industry include importing raw materials like cotton and silk, creative human resources, and market access and technology support despite high domestic and export uh, demand. So the imported role for beef, for example, we, we import a lot from Australia, from Brazil, <clears throat> uh, some other countries, uh, non-Muslim countries, but yet uh, uh, they, they provide, they know the market is there, so they provide uh, the, the, the halal procedures. And <clears throat> lastly, on the halal industry, we, we try to have a look at medicine and uh, cosmetics. Um, the export is 1.5 billion USD in 2022. The growth is way smaller if we compare to the processed food and beverage is only 2.7%. Uh, our ranking is even more lower, only 36 uh, uh, on the rank and the market share is so uh, small, 0.1%. So high domestic and export demand, but rather but imported raw materials um, uh, hinder Indonesia pharmaceutical industry from C1, which is countries capable of drug production to only B, which is, um, uh, 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 sorry, uh, to B countries with innovative pharmaceutical industry characterized by number of drug patents, or A, the nation with mass production capabilities and focus on uh, research and development. Now, some people might ask why our market was so small. Um, um, uh, if you have a look at the Islamic finance, there's only 119.5 uh, um, uh, uh, billion. Um, uh, one of the reasons that people think was because the Islamic financial literacy index was 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 so low. I mean, like if if I can ask you who here know what. Uh, riba is, for example, or what my series. Um, so the literacy towards Islamic finance uh, is very low. If, even if we compare it with the uh, uh, conventional financial literacy in Indonesia, the latest figures in 2022, uh, we almost reach, uh, we just slightly over 9%. Whereas in for the uh, conventional economics is almost fifty percent, so more or less we are we are uh, one fifth of the uh, um, uh, financial literacy index uh, for conventional, um, and that's also create a very small financial inclusion. Uh, if you have a look at the data here, is almost uh, ninety percent uh, uh, for the conventional for the Islamic. We are still on the 12, 13 percent uh, in 2022. Uh, please feel free if you want to ask question in the middle of uh, the explanation. And also, if we try to compare uh, Islamic Bank to the total banking industry in Indonesia, uh, it is a very sad uh, uh, figures, to be honest. We are only reaching 7.1 percent of market share for the Islamic bank compared to the national uh, bank. So the national bank's assets into or market share uh, uh, is around about uh, 719.3 USD billion, whereas in uh, the Islamic was only uh, slightly above 50 uh, billion uh, USD. So, Uh, this is for the banking. Islamic uh, non-bank financial industry is only 9.3% compared to, no, sorry, 9.3 billion compared to 100 or almost 200 uh, billion uh, USD for the conventional. So it's quite small as well, 0.4.7% uh, uh, only. In terms of capital market, this is also another challenge. We only gain 18.3%, but this is the best compared to other part um, uh, of, of finance, uh, compared to the bank, compared to non-financial, uh, uh, non-bank financial industry or institutions. Total asset in Indonesia by 2022, and now 
uh, reaching slightly above 10%, the Islamic finance, uh, conventional uh, finance uh, reached the rest of it. So um, it's, it's quite a, um, um, uh, ironic where the Muslim are reaching almost 90%, but the Islamic financial asset is only 10%. And a market share of the Islamic bank is is only 7.09% compared to all conventional economics. So the Islamic finance was, was actually higher because of the contributions by the capital market. Um, and, 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 and this is what uh, actually being being helped uh, being held in Indonesia. <clears throat> Comparison of Islamic banks to the total banking industry. Um, in 2021, uh, asset growth of commercial and Islamic bank, in this case, the Islamic bank is always um, uh, 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 having a higher rate of growth uh, compared to the conventional. But yet, because the principle are so huge in, com uh, in comparison, the conventional, the the, the numbers, the absolute numbers that we multiple it um, is only 10.2%, but this 10.2% is, is multiple by the figures that was more or less 90 times compared to here. So although the numbers, the, the rate of growth is lower, but uh, the absolute numbers are actually multiplied mm -hmm. by, uh, uh, by the compare, compare to the to the Islamic one. So uh, we are keep having a positive growth even to the uh, 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 for the uh, where the conventional are experiencing negative growth but uh, yet the total is not yet reaching more than 10% uh, market share in terms of credit for financing growth of commercial and islamic bank we saw that we were actually lagged behind in 2021 but we are way better compared to, to uh, conventional bank in 2022 uh, and 2023, uh, we are also better uh, uh, until May. Uh, we are more or less uh, three times compared to uh, uh, a conventional. What does it mean? It means that the money that was actually being collected through Islamic Bank are truly being um, uh, intermediated to the to the future customers to the uh, loan. Uh, 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 people who request for loan. And then in terms of profit growth of commercial and Islamic bank, we saw that Islamic bank is actually more um, uh, 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 profit compared to uh, percentage wise compared to the conventional. We gain around 34% uh, uh, in 2021, but yet in 2022 uh, when when the um uh, the 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 covid is still there we are uh, even in this case the uh, uh sorry the profit islamic bank is only slightly higher compared to the commercial bank sorry yeah um this is the sharia financial industry um uh, in the middle east we try to have a look at and compare it with, between um, uh, Middle East and Asia as the key players. Uh, what we can see is that if we have a look at the global IFSI by region, uh, the Gulf is actually uh, uh, dominating uh, the, 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 the global IFSS. Um, <clears throat> Islamic finance, um, uh, financial services industry, East Asia, where Indonesia was being there, and then uh, Middle East and uh, South Asia, others are uh, uh, five and two percent. Uh, by the sector, we saw that majority of the industry are actually fine. Financing in the uh, Gulf Corporations Council, Asia, Southeast.
Abhijaneri, we can't hear you. You can't hear me? Yeah, yeah. We now we can hear you. Now we can hear you. What was it just just being lost a few seconds ago or has it been quite some time? Like for two seconds. It was for two seconds. Uh but but prior to that it is it's all just okay. Wait a second. Hello, Pat. Hello. Yeah. Pat. Hello. Udah ya, udah oke ya. Oke, oke, the the yeah. Okay. Can can you hear me clearly now? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Yes, okay. Okay, I'll 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 start again. I hope that I um let me share. I think this is the last slide. Uh, um, should I should I re redo it? What I want to say is that uh, in here the, the 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 in terms of Islamic banking, it was majority was was still uh, in the Gulf. More than fifty percent was was still Gulf Corporations uh, Council, the GCC area, uh, South Asia uh, was was. Actually, um, uh, on the third, uh, we are we are Asia. I think my internet connection is unstable. I'll 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 change the connection for a second. Just a second. Um, I will spare. Um, my apology for this. Um, Just a second. Hopefully it's better now. My apology. All right. Um, let me um, give some some final um, um, uh, data regarding the, the 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 conditions. The top ten countries by Islamic finance, if we have a look in two thousand and twenty, were Iran, uh, Saudi Arabia, Malaysia. Uh, UAE and uh, Qatar, Kuwait, Indonesia was on the uh, seventh. So if we want to, if we want to actually um, uh, compare with Malaysia, the closest neighbors uh, uh, of us was was we are uh, one fifth of it. So if we want to the level where Malaysia is now being operating, uh, we need to actually leverage the the asset by five point two times. Um, uh, if we have a look at the uh, banking share, Islamic banking share compared to the uh, total uh, banking asset by jurisdiction, we are only at six point one percent. So um, the 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 rest, the ninety three point nine percent, are still conventional. Um, the the Iran and Sudan has been accomplished by a hundred percent. Saudi Arabia seventy seven percent of the Islamic uh, the total banking asset are Islamic. Um, Brunei over almost uh, sixty percent. Um, Kuwait almost fifty one. If we compare to Malaysia, Malaysia is thirty one percent. So ours only six point one. So more or less we are uh, one six in terms of the percentage of that. So um, if we want to be optimistic, definitely we have to. This is the room for growth to to actually. Um, uh, try to 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 have a more significant presence uh, uh, in the market. So, in that case, what we saw is that um, how to proceed for that. You know, like of course the experts come up with different ideas. Uh, uh, there are many many discussion regarding this. Uh, 
one of one of the hottest issue currently domestically is uh, referring to the to the um, uh, the so called a uh, spin off of the uh, banking. So previously we have a, a system where um, Windows system, the full fledged branch system that was available. So a bank can a conventional bank can open a branch, uh, can open a window for Islamic banks and. And uh, previous regulations require the 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 the, the, the branch. Uh, if it is still under the, the the conventional banks, they need to spin off. They need to stand alone, independent, uh, independently. So uh, uh, some uh, experts believe this is the way to actually uh, in, uh, increase the, uh, the 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 growth and the bank. Uh, asset from the Islamic uh, uh, bank. And yet, uh, just lately, a uh, few days ago, the, 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 the authority, the fin our financial authority, uh, uh, decided that it is not obligatory to do the spin-off. So uh, some of the experts that actually support the spin-off were was feeling uneasy about that. Uh, it just it just showing a, a, a uh, a less committed um, uh, regulator for supporting the Islamic uh, uh, Sharia financial industry in Indonesia. So um, there are many. There are many uh, other suggestions. For example, the conversion. Uh, some of the bank convert into the Islamic bank, the conventional convert into the Islamic bank, and and lately we we were also have one of the uh, regional bank that was that was uh, a plan to be converted fully to be Islamic bank and uh, being cancelled out. So uh, is a is a challenge. Uh, uh, at the same time, it's a room for growth uh, in this case. Now. Um, How about Sukuk? We're talking about bank just now. How about Sukuk? Sukuk is um, the the Islamic or Sharia uh, 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 bond. Okay, so the Sharia bond uh, uh, is actually showing a faster growth compared to the banking sector. Uh, this is the reduction share of Islamic banking asset. If you have a look, for example, Indonesia is only contributed one point nine percent of the total Islamic banking asset, where 30.6% were actually from Saudi Arabia, Iran contributed for 17.0%, Malaysia is 11.2%, so Malaysia is actually uh, 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 having more than five times compared to Indonesia, contributed more than five times in Indonesia. I don't see uh, uh, Pakistan uh, on, on the pie chart, uh, um, uh, so, uh, it's also, uh, unfortunately, so a very small marginal increase compared to 2011 figures. Um, previously, we contributed only 1.5 and now 1.9%. But in terms of Sukuk, we are the third largest uh, uh, Sukuk issuance country. Uh, we contribute to almost 16% of the uh, market, um, but it's still dominated by the government Sukuk, sovereign Sukuk. So Sukuk that was issued by our government. So in this case, we reached this compared to the 2014 by um, uh, almost uh, two and a half times uh, to reach this number. The sovereign Sukuk issuance in Indonesia dominates the market. We are 20% of global sovereign Sukuk. So the total Sukuk is only 15.8, but in terms of the uh, uh, government sukuk or sovereign sukuk, we reach 20% of the global sukuk. Um, this aligns with the government policy to increase financing through bonds. Meanwhile, corporate sukuk accounts for only 2.2%. So the government is uh, uh, issuing a lot of sukuk, but the, 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 the corporate are not actually doing the same. Uh, Samudra Indonesia, the, com the company where I work, uh, is actually planning to, 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 to also um, issue sukuks, uh, ijara sukuks uh, 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 later this uh, month uh, to to actually contribute to the to the to the to the sukuk market. So, 
Um, we try to have a look at the Islamic financial development indicators for, for last year and see that uh, although we are number three compared to Malaysia, compared to Saudi Arabia, but our score is way behind. For example, for the total score, we are 61, where Malaysia is 113. So Malaysia is almost 1.7 times better compared to us. In terms of financial performance, financial performance is an aggregative of uh, these three variables, the total Islamic finance asset, year-on-year -year growth of Islamic finance asset, Islamic financial institutions. Malaysia is 9.98, we are 31 only. So we are one third even less than one third compared to Malaysia, and we are uh, a half, less than a half compared to Saudi Arabia. In terms of governance, the, it was also, we were quite better. We're better than Saudi Arabia, but we are around 50% left uh, compared to Malaysia. But sustainability is something that's quite um, uh, uh, low for us. We are only 30 and uh, Saudi Arabia is almost three times compared to us, um, whereas Malaysia is almost uh, four times compared to us. Uh, the knowledge, if you have a like the knowledge is here, Islamic finance education providers, Islamic finance research paper produced, Islamic finance journals, we are number one. We are 195, whereas Malaysia is 147. So um, there was a joke that if the whole world um, uh, financial, Islamic financial education providers are combined, uh, is nothing compared to what Indonesia has provided for the uh, Islamic finance education. So we have so much um, uh, universities offering the pro programs on uh, Islamic economics and Islamic finance uh, 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 and, and some other uh, uh, Islamic economics and econ uh, economics and finance related uh, programs. And lastly, uh, in terms of awareness, we are quite low. Um, uh, we are only fifty six. That's why I was I was. This is also the issue that that's actually in line with our uh, lack of um, um, financial literacy uh, that was being being uh, shown before on on the previous slide. And Islamic banking in Indonesia, uh, in Malaysia, grow faster compared to our domestic uh, banking industry and other Asian countries. If you have a look, Malaysia are constant, constantly uh, on the double digit, not only double digit, but they're also constantly being uh, 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 slightly below 30 or above 30. Even the last year, the, the 2020, the, 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 the market share of the Islamic asset in Malaysia is reaching 36.6%, uh, whereas in our country, uh, we do improve to 7.4, but it's still single, single digit compared to uh, 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 Malaysia and Brunei. Um, if we want to see how much uh, uh, the banking sector is actually playing their role as intermediary, we, we try to see it from the loan growth uh, uh, in this case. Uh, Malaysia banking sector are very aggressive on uh, the loan growth. Um, um, there's slight reductions in 2019 uh, uh, by the Islamic Bank, uh, but yet it's still way above uh, the um, Malaysian banking sector and the conventional. So, for example, the conventional is, all, is only grow for 0.6%, uh, 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 but, but the, 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 the uh, Islamic uh, Bank is uh, able to maintain uh, eight point five percent uh, 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 market expansion, a uh, growth expansion on that time. So this is the highlight of Malaysia's Islamic finance ecosystem. We want, we if we want to compare with uh, one of the best practice in the world, um, uh, the total global share of the of Malaysia's ecosystem is eighteen point four percent. This is the market share of total global Islamic financial asset in Malaysia. There's a solid growth in banking and takaful. Um, it grows for 22.7% two, um, in 2010 and 41% um, uh, in terms of the uh, 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 market share. 
And the Takaful is also reaching almost 20% uh, market share uh, compared to the conventional one. Uh, we saw the key driver in global economics, uh, in global Sukuk and Islamic funds, the Malaysia is reaching 33.4% for global Sukuk issuance. For global Sukuk outstanding, Malaysia is actually uh, having 45.1%. And for global Islamic funds, it, Malaysia is contributing almost 27%. So... What also very interesting on Malaysia, if we have a look at how could they um, progress a lot, we see that innovative financial solutions and development in meeting sustainability objective was being there. The value-based um, intermediary initiative or the VBI um, uh, that was introduced by the Central Bank of Malaysia. This is the world first, uh, 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 they, they introduced the world first um, uh, uh, SDGs uh, Sukuk um, um, and SRI Sukuk and SRI fund frameworks also eventually produced the world first uh, SDG Sukuks. Uh, we saw that there's a comprehensive environment and comprehensive ecosystem uh, uh, in Malaysia. There are enabling regulatory and uh, legal framework. Uh, the Malaysia has IFSA has got Sharia standard and Sharia governance framework, and also CBA was there. Uh, it's also host to key global Islamic finance infrastructure. The IFSB, for example, the headquarters is in Malaysia. Uh, also private talent ecosystem serving global uh, Islamic finance need. And lastly, uh, Sharia compliant market structure was, 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 uh, was there as well. And we saw that the player are quite diverse, offering Islamic mm -hmm. financial services in Malaysia from Islamic Bank, Takaful Operator, Retakaful Operator, Development Financial Institution, Investment Bank, etc. Until uh, we saw that um, training and education entities are more than 68, and the professional artillery services, for example, legal and Sharia firms, are above 60. So the government is also facilitating lots of uh, infrastructure in that case. Uh, there are 40 currencies traded, 264 trading participants, and 24-7 trading hours with a total average uh, trading uh, in Bursa or uh, Bursa Suk Al Sila was, was, was 32.9 uh, billion uh, ringgit Malaysia. So this is what we saw, uh, the key driving uh, factors. Uh, if, that, that actually contribute to Islamic economics and finance development in Indonesia. The first is the unique characteristic of Islamic finance. The Islamic finance industry is superior compared to the conventional one in terms of stability and efficiency. And yet the claim uniqueness of Islamic financial system should be, should not been, should has, has not been act effectively reflected in the financial contracts that determine the financial rights and the liabilities. So we, we saw that, for example, the, the contract of Mudaroba, the, the profit sharing is powerful compared to the uh, interest system. And yet we are not being able to, to, to articulate it into a good contract that um, motivate people to take that over the, 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 the conventional or um, um, uh, as usual uh, uh, lending uh, agreement. Uh, under the uh, uh, RIBA system or interest-based system. And uh, we also see that macroeconomics and structural reforms has been done, uh, need to be continuous efforts are required to expand the Islamic finance industry, including the refinement of legal and regulatory framework to facilitate its sustainability growth. And we believe that financial literacy is something that we need to also uh, put into the key factor, Islamic financial literacy, awareness, reputation, and attitude toward Islamic banking will significantly influence the intention to use Islamic banking. <laughs> so many people didn't want to use it because they don't know, they are not aware about. And also consumer satisfactions, um, uh, selling Islamic good need to also be professionally selling it, not just um, uh, um, uh, try to attract people who uh, uh, who who feel more related to it, but but um, forgive the 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 unprofessional 
uh, quality or, or low qual surface quality that was actually being there. So we believe that surface quality, including compliance, assurance, reliability, tangibility, empathy, and responsiveness play a vital role in assessing customer satisfaction in financial sector uh, alongside the adherence to Islamic principles in the business activity. And lastly, we also believe that religiosity and social influence will affect customers' attitude toward using Islamic banking service. Therefore, it will it is the key fact one of the key factors that drive the Islamic finance development in Indonesia. I think I have um, uh, delivered uh, some of the uh, ideas, some of the discussions for for us all uh, for the last one hour plus. So, um, Neha, I I return it back to you. Um, uh, and thank you discussion. so much yeah. it was a great session now i request the students if anyone have a question please raise your hands yeah so it's a uh, soha salim and uh, now you can ask the question soha assalamualaikum hope you're doing well sir am i audible we can hear you. Okay, so my question is, what are the potential benefits for foreigner investors looking to invest in Indonesian halal industry? Mm -hmm. What is the... So my the question is, what are, the, what are the potential benefits for foreigner investors looking to invest in Indonesian halal industry? Well, we, the government is actually putting a lot of effort to 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 attract investment, uh, foreign investment especially uh, to Indonesia, both on the uh, financial asset or the, the 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 direct foreign uh, foreign investment. So both to the uh, uh, financial. Uh, uh, uh investment like uh to the to the stock market or or uh, the sukuk and some others but the direct foreign investment is is also something that the government is actually um uh uh, uh putting effort a lot to 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 attract so um there's there are facilities that government uh give for uh committed of uh investment um um lately um uh, uh government also issues several regulations that that try to comply with giving incentive of um uh, of the foreign investment in 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 any sectors basically in indonesia uh halal sector is definitely one of one of the one of the uh sectors that uh are widely open for for contributing to uh or or having a, a direct investment or uh, a financial investment. Uh, Indonesia uh, issues, for example, uh, uh, um, uh, sukuk in dollars that enable uh, the, the 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 foreign investor to to invest on a financial asset. And yet, uh, lots of other things was actually uh, uh, being open for 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 that. And and um, as a, a developing countries, uh, surely the 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 expectations towards um, uh, investment from foreign countries are high because uh, knowing that uh, 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 it will affect the economic conditions uh, uh, positively. I hope it answers. Um... Thank you, sir, for your answer. Yeah, thank you, Sohar. Uh, uh, and the next is Salma. Please, Salma, you may ask the question now. Um, Assalamu My question is related to the previous question asked by Soha Salim. So I wanted to um, ask that how the halal certification law works in Indonesia uh, or how it will affect the ease of business in Indonesia. Do you think it will attract more investors and businesses to work in Indonesia or it will repel them? Well, the current regulation is uh, um, next year, any products that enter and will be marketed in Indonesia 
are required to have halal certifications. Um, there is no um, uh, discussions toward canceling it. Uh, and yet the government now are uh, actually putting effort to make it more accessible, especially for some small and medium enterprises that uh, exist uh, in Indonesia or from foreign countries to Indonesia. So, uh, for example, uh, the, 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 the certification usually need to be renewed every two years. Now they, 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 they change the regulation into three years so that the, 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 the cost of certifications, uh, uh, recertification um, uh, uh, cheaper. Uh, 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 we saw that many, many, many uh, uh, company now try to embrace that directly. Um, uh, for example, there is one, one of the um, uh, Donut, uh, I, 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 uh, I think everybody know Donut, and and there's one Indonesia-based uh, uh, company that was uh, uh, just get halal certifications after being operating, being in operations in Indonesia for um, the, 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 almost twenty years plus. And they are actually operating in Singapore. They are also op operating in Kuala Lumpur, for example. And both in uh, Singapore and Kuala Lumpur, they got halal certifications. But in Indonesia, they don't. Uh, uh, they don't. They don't get this halal certification until uh, two months ago. So uh, that also show that um, uh, from the business point of view, before for them, uh, the halal certification doesn't add value. Uh, uh, because although they don't have the halal certification, people keep buying it. Um, now, because it is enforced by the government, um, uh, they, they start to do it. And also because they are there, I, I saw that they are now in decline in terms of the demand after 20 years plus, uh, they, they start to see that the, 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 uh, the, the halal awareness of the people are now being built quite strongly that that people wouldn't 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 uh wouldn't buy the the the, the products that was that was um, not being certified and there's there's a very interesting case just uh uh three days ago uh, uh there's a wine producer and the wine producer put halal label in their bottles uh, because the government is creating a new way, the so-called the self-claim halal certification. So there are there are procedures that they need to do, and then with that self-claim, they 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 can eventually have a look whether their line of production on how the goods were being being produced are in line with that. If it is, then they can have the halal cert cert certification. And yet this producer tried to do the 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 self-claim halal uh, uh, procedure and then but they didn't reveal reveal that what they are actually being um being uh presented in that uh registration halal registration was was not representing the the truth so instead of saying that is um a wine they they what they said is a a a, a, a juice a, a fruit juice so with fruit juice, then the, the halal certificate certification office um, uh, allow them to, to, to put halal uh, uh, certificate on the bottles. And uh, when the market realized it was wine and it was it was actually being labeled halal, then the market reacted a lot. And then the, the, the government eventually uh, took back the, 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 the product from the market. Uh, uh, realizing that uh, the the producer was not being truthful when they when they register for the halal certification, so we saw that the government, at one hand, when they when they try to be very tight about the halal certifications, they know it might it might jeopardize uh, or or create a tension for the uh, producer. It might create uh, this incentive for them to pursue. But when they try to relax the 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 the, the, the process and everything, um, uh, uh, some of the producers are being naughty, uh, uh, and 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 
creating problems with 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 that so the government need to be somewhere in between they have done their their uh, uh their 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 best in that manner but yet um uh uh, uh uh, a very good lesson that has been has been being shown for the last one week regarding this problem. Uh, thank you, Salma. I, I hope that it answers uh, your question. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the last question is from Faiza Tahir. So I request her to please ask a question. Assalamualaikum, sir. Yep. Firstly, uh, thank you so much for this very informative lecture. Uh, sir, as you discussed in the lecture about most of the uh, awareness and um, the, you know, the promotion is being done by the Gen Z on social media. So my question was, does the Indonesian government have a strong hold or control over the social media uh, and do they take swift response and action against any negative posts or not? Well, the government tried to do to do that. Um, um, but, but it's not to the level of China. <laughs> uh, we can still access Facebook instead of Weibo, for example, in China. Uh, uh, and and to some extent, we are we're quite free. We're quite free. There, there, there's no stronghold of the government that, that they try to impose um, uh, 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 restrictions a lot on 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 the access on of, of the internet. Some people might regard uh, it's quite excessive. Um, uh, uh, uh but 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 uh, i think the moderation that the government has been done has been has been fit to some levels uh uh uh, uh, uh where the protections toward the interests of our national interests and the and and the youth has been done but yet um um uh, uh the market has been has been has been so much influenced by that and it's a yet yeah, it's a good and bad things as well uh, but but I cannot see that you know like for example now it's a very uh, very easy to find local brands being being on top of mind being being the high the higher purchase for that month uh, and beating the the the, the normal PNG Unilever L'Oreal producer uh, kind of things. If you know what I mean, for example, for for skincare products, um, skincare products, then then people go for very much a, 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 a local brand that that actually beat lots of big big names that was available for international. Um, Unilever, for example, Indonesia is uh, one of the top five contributors for their total global income. Um, uh, now it's reducing quite a lot uh, 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 compared to the potential because there are so much role of the new uh, line of uh, skincare that was uh, produced by local uh, producers as well as um, uh, 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 built and 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 being sold uh, introduced by social media. And by the way, one of the strongest local brand, Warda was Warda. They call it Warda. Is it's uh, one of the the tagline that they put was that on that time when there is no concern by any other uh, cosmetic company uh, on the halalness, they are the first one to to introduce that it needs to be halal, and they are the first one to introduce um, a woman with hijab uh, uh, for their sc uh, skincare products, and then. The market share was very huge, and they're very famous for for uh, uh, their corporate social responsibility, their 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 um, um, their, their generosity towards um, uh, many human humanitarian as well as as uh, giving back to the society. Uh, they built they built universities. Uh, no, I mean help universities. They 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 uh, in my university, for example, they 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 have a promise to. To 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 renew the, the the masjid, for example, but but during the COVID, for example, where it's very hard to 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 find um, oxygen and some of the medicine, they 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 contribute a lot to 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 public um, hospitals uh, regarding that. So um, knowing that uh, um, uh, their product was was reachable by the consumers, especially the the Gen Z, and and knowing that they are doing uh, some 
good cows uh, activities. Uh, they, uh, you know, the, the the Gen Z generations, they they are aware about the 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 green, the the, the sustainability, uh, 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 how 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 good they are. They uh, uh, the um, um, uh, environment kind of thing. So. Uh, as a local uh, producer, they, they know this concern better compared to the international brand and they respond to it um, faster compared to the international brand. And then that was actually one of the biggest attractions that has been capitalized by them to, 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 to increase their, their market share and brand awareness for, for the people. So it's in the, uh, it's a, in the very interesting um, era now, uh, knowing that some of the big names were being beaten locally uh, in Indonesia, both in the uh, uh, industry and the internet is the weapon that the local people are doing. And, and uh, the government are putting effort a lot on that. Um, uh, in fact, during the pandemic, knowing that um, uh, um, internet connection are very important for our people to study for our students to 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 access uh, learning and educations, the government built uh, a lot of effort to 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 make us connected uh, 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 and and uh, 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 to remote areas or areas where the internet connection was not as good. So um, um, I think uh, I have to say that the government has has done uh, tremendously good for for. Uh, uh, for making sure people are connected uh, and 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 the freedom that was given uh, uh, on the moderate level uh, enabling us to capitalize the the the, the internet uh, world for for making a better and and making the local brand winning the the, the local market I think I hope it answers your question Faiza yes thank you so much sir um, we are having a last question from Daniel Marcelin. So, Daniel Marcelin, you may ask the question, please. Yes, please, Daniel. Uh, yeah. Aslam Yiku, sir. Uh, my question is from the overall financial perspective. Why mm -hmm. is the return on conventional financial assets always greater than that of the Islamic financial assets? Like, what are your thoughts regarding this? Why are the return of? Why is the return on conventional financial assets? always greater than that of the Islamic financial assets? Well, in the case of Indonesia, that, that was the other way around. <laughs> the return on the on the, on the on the Islamic bank are actually higher compared to the conventional. Um, uh, the, that actually creates uh, some problems uh, to some extent, because if they claim it as a return is a cost for the for the consumer um if they borrow if they lend the cost for example i mean back when i was when i was um uh, trying to get a mortgage um uh, 12 15 years ago when i tried to get that mortgage based on the conventional market the charge was around about 8% 8 10% then I tried to go to the to, to the Islamic bank, and on that time, the the charge equivalently it was not based on the interest, but equivalently when 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 it was the rate of return that was uh, that was charged the the cost of the cost of borrowing for me the rate of return for the bank um, was fifteen percent, so it was almost double the 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 the, the, the market price, you know, so. Um, I might be, you know, like the the there are there are metrics that was that was introduced by the by the by the uh, central bank of Indonesia showing that what kind of people are you, you know, like some people are uh, uh, Sharia mind. So I might be the Sharia mind part where where I I want to sacrifice in terms of price as long as it's uh, Sharia compliance. Uh, so and and that was the case of of uh, some percentage of people who consume the Islamic uh, finance in Indonesia. But now we are quite happy because at the same time, now it's almost at the same par. And, and sometimes 
it's even cheaper if you go for the Islamic banking. So um, uh, the, 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 if you have a look at the rate of growth of Islamic bank or Islamic assets uh, in Indonesia, comparing it with the rate of growth on conventional bank in Indonesia, we are always being better. We are always been higher. Islamic bank is always been higher compared to the conventional. Uh, but it shows at one side that we are the, the Islamic bank are charging the the, the 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 consumer a higher margin compared to the conventional. But also, it might also indicate that um, uh, the performance of the Islamic banking institutions are better compared to the conventional. But yet, percentage-wise, compared to the whole, we are still only at six point nine percent. So market share is 6.9%. Only 6.9% of the total banking asset are Islamic. Others are not Islamic. So in that case, you know that the, the role are not to the level that that that, uh, that might be expected knowing the, the number of Muslim is 84.7%. Uh, so um, uh, in 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 fact, we when we want to to see um, the, the 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 return of the the conventional and Islamic bank, uh, we we see a consistent uh, of superiority of Islamic bank compared to the, the 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 conventional. So, what also interesting is that back in 1998, when the Asian financial crisis hit Indonesia. Uh, the bank was offering uh, uh, people to, to 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 when they deposit their money a very huge interest rate, 60, 70 percent. So you can imagine, for example, if you want if you have one thousand dollars in your account, uh, it will get 60 percent uh, interest for one year. That means you can get around about fifty dollars monthly, right? So um, with such a high interest rate, some people, some Muslim in Indonesia who used to use the bank, get out of the bank and move to Islamic bank with the reasons that I think if it is just one, two, three percent, five percent, ten percent is is still not riba, but when it's sixty percent, it's definitely riba. The, the people understanding was was, as simple as that on that time so that so that on that time the resilience that was shown by the islamic bank was actually better compared to the conventional where on the asian, asia financial crisis lots of bank in indonesia would need to be consolidated and then and then severely hit by the financial crisis and the islamic bank was actually being more resilient on that time so um uh, it depends from one bank to another. Uh, the, the happy thing about the Islamic Bank in Indonesia, uh, just last year, the last two years, we are we are sowing a, a, a merger among three um, major Islamic Bank in Indonesia to, to, to enable them to actually uh, get a better performance by by having by being bigger uh, in terms of asset and roles. So now in the top 10 Previously, in the top ten of the biggest or the largest bank in in Indonesia, you won't find any Islamic bank. Now you can have it, uh, uh, one bank being there, the Bank Syariah Indonesia or BSI, that was being uh, uh, that was coming from the merge of three previous Islamic bank. I hope it answers your questions. It's it goes here and there though. Uh, um, I'm just I'm just I'm just thinking that uh, I need to give a bit of the breadth and the depth of the of of, of the cases on uh, return on, in, on on the investment yeah i got it just means that it could always it could also be the other way around uh, indeed right? indeed indeed <laughs> well if you, if you know and, the how the bank how the bank was actually uh, operating you know like they got the surplus um uh, site surplus site is telling you these are the people who has the money right and they deposit their money to the bank. So the bank is here. That's why the bank is called being intermediary financial institution because they're in term, they are they're somewhere in between the surplus area. And here is the 
uh, negative area, right? Uh, where they need money. So the bank take the surplus from this and then being the intermediate to channel the fund to those who need the money, right? And they're gonna charge something from here. They get the return on their investment and they're gonna share a bit or some part to those who give them, deposit their money to them, right? So if their investment is actually so much high, that also means that they're charging it a lot in here, except if it was coming from non-loan activities. You know, like for example, um, if you if you if you send money, transfer money to another bank, then the bank will charge you some amount, or for the use of the ATM, or for the use of the card, the the bank might charge you uh, some some non non loan based uh, activities that was charged. Then 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 um, this is also a big market in Indonesia uh, uh, that that actually being 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 source of uh, of profitability of the existing banking system in our country. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. No problem, Daniel. Thank you, Evijanedi. It was a great session. So as there are no more questions, so we should end the session here. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, hopefully it's beneficial for you and yeah. give a bit of glance about um, the Indonesia uh, Islamic uh, banking and industry. Okay, thank you so much. So we end the session here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pak. Happy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Pak. Thank you, Pak. Thank you, Pak. Thank you, Pak. Thank you, Pak.